It was 1969 and I was 21 with no clear idea about what I wanted to do with my life. My family must have believed that there's no place like home because the farthest I'd ever been from my home in Philadelphia was Atlantic City. But all of that was about to change because I decided to join the Peace Corps. Before I knew it, my Peace Corps training was over and I arrived in what would be my home for the next two years, Tegucigalpa, Honduras. I went to work with an agency called Caritas de Honduras, which was the Honduran partner agency to Catholic Relief Services. My job was to help teach nutrition classes to women in the most remote areas of the country. Meanwhile, my Honduran coworkers were focusing on community organization. Whenever we would travel, we would stay wherever we could, which usually meant some church-related accommodations. There were times, though, when there was nowhere to stay, and so we would bring along our own tents. On those trips, we would arrange to take our meals in the home of a local family. One morning, after a night in a tent, I stopped in the outhouse on the way into breakfast. The outhouse was kind of built on a hillside, you know, not leaning, but at a bit of an incline. As I was inside, minding my own business, all of a sudden, I heard grunts and snorts coming from down below. So I looked down through the hole, and there was a pig looking up at me with a pig look of anticipation. <laughs> now, remember, remember, I'm from Philadelphia, where we have neither open-air outhouses nor free-range pigs, so I don't have to tell you how confused I was. But then I had a light bulb moment. I remembered a Spanish saying I had re recently learned, and everything became clear. El chancho que madruga come mierda caliente. We have an equivalent saying in English, but we are a bit more delicate. We say, the early bird catches the worm. <laughs> but in Honduras in 1969 and some neighboring countries, the pig who gets up at dawn eats hot shit. <laughs> and, and that pig was down there waiting for his or her first meal of the day. <laughs> so I pulled myself together and I went inside for breakfast. When I got there, the lady of the house said to me in a very excited voice that she had a big surprise for me. It turned out they had just butchered one of their two community-owned pigs and she was going to be serving a true Honduran specialty, chicharrones, fried pig skin, fancy pork rinds. Well, I am sure you can all imagine the thought bubbles that were floating around my head. On the one side was the chancho waiting for some mierda caliente. This pig on the plate that I am about to eat had probably been an early riser too at some point. <laughs> you are what you eat. But on the other side was something that I had learned in Peace Corps training, which was, if someone offers you food, unless it is some vile looking fluid that you think might contain an intestinal parasite that could lead to a slow and painful death, you probably should accept it. Plus, I am a social worker, so you all know which thought bubble won out. Well, I'd like to say that I ate the chicharrones and I enjoyed them, but I am highly suggestible and I have a vivid imagination, and so, with each crunchy, greasy bite, I knew exactly what that pig had probably eaten. I just hope that my face didn't give me away to the really nice lady, but I did turn down her offer of a second helping. <laughs> so oddly, it turns out that chicharrones have had a renaissance among foodies, and people are paying big bucks for deep fried pig skin. I have seen them on the menu at a pricey upscale restaurant in my current hometown of State College, at a Cuban place in Philadelphia, and at a Colombian restaurant on the Caribbean island of Bonaire. And each time that happens, I have a moment when I travel back to that outhouse on the hillside with that pig looking up at me, and I order something completely different. <laughs> Thank you.